South Africa, as well as the Mediterranean, Aegean, and Black Seas. The satellite is scheduled to become fully operational sometime in the second quarter of this year. Now let's take a moment to learn more about what makes this communication satellite so unique. Turksat. Past, present, and future exist at the same moment. They are all building new experiences that inspire great ideas and breakthroughs in the blink of an eye. In the pursuit of innovative technologies, Turksat, one of the world's leading satellite operators, is now stronger in space with its new satellite fleet. TurkSat 3A communication satellite at the 42 degree east location offers both satellite telecommunication and direct TV broadcasting services via Europe, Turkey, and Central Asia. TurkSat 4A provides broadcasting services within a wide area covering Turkey, Africa, Europe, the Middle East, and Asia on KU Band. TurkSat 4B, a multi-band satellite, ensures high flexibility of switchability and connectivity among different service areas and provides services over a wide geographic region between west of China and east of England, spanning Turkey as well as Europe, Central Asia, the Middle East, and Africa on both KU Band and KA Band. Thanks to Airbus state-of-the-art technology, the most powerful satellite of the TurkSat fleet, TurkSat 5A, upon being operational with 10 kilowatts payload power, will be active across a wide area at the 31 degree east orbit covering Turkey, Europe, the Middle East, North Africa, Central okay, West Africa, is complete. South Africa, as well as the Mediterranean and the Aegean Sea and the Black Sea. With its satellite fleet, TurkSat focuses on rising values and technologies in satellite communication. TurkSat is an alliance of values that opens doors to the world and inspires communication with its reliable and expert staff investing in the knowledge of the future. We are in an age where information is instantly shared. Our expectations are rapidly changing. Technology is leading us to new experiences. We proudly proceed on a path illuminated by the information that makes our lives meaningful in the age of communication. While new experiences inspire great ideas, TurkSat of the future invites you to be a part of this moment. TurkSat, Space Age in Communications. Mission Control. Off. We're just about four and a half minutes from liftoff. Shortly, the transporter erector is going to retract to its pre-launch position. We may see in a few seconds here the arms cradling right under those uh, fairings. Watch those open up. What's going to happen is that TE is going to retract about two degrees from the rocket from vertical. And you can see right now those arms are opening up just slightly. In a few seconds, you'll see those arms back off as the TE retracts. And it's just, those two degrees is just a little uh, bit of movement, but it's enough to clear the rocket uh, to allow it to leave the pad. At liftoff, it's going to move to a position 45 degrees from the rocket. 
can see it's starting to retract a little slowly there. Uh, first stage fuel loading is complete. And we're currently awaiting for the first stage liquid oxygen loading to complete. And shortly after that, at about T minus two minutes, the second stage is locks will also complete. One final big milestone before liftoff. You're gonna hear the announcement that Falcon 9 is in startup mode. This announcement means that the rocket's own internal computers are now controlling the launch countdown on the Falcon 9. Once the engines are confirmed to be a full power, the flight computer, which is located on the second stage, will command the ground hold downs to release the rocket right at T minus zero. The satellite team continues to monitor the status and health of the Turksat 5A payload located inside the fairing on the top of the second stage. All systems are go on the satellite. In terms of range and weather, currently everything appears to be on track for an on-time launch. The range is green. We've been monitoring weather. Uh, the only primary concern we have is the cumulus cloud, thick cloud rule. Uh, but right now, conditions are looking favorable. Uh, the percent of violation is 30%. That means there's only a 30% chance of us postponing liftoff. So things are looking good. Uh, if for some reason we have a call on today's launch, we may be able to begin again within this launch window tonight. But we do have a similar four-hour backup opportunity scheduled for tomorrow evening around the same time. But for now, all systems continue to be go for an on-time liftoff at 9.15 p.m. Eastern Time. At this time, the locks loading is complete. It just finished on the second stage, and that is the last milestone for propellant loading prior to liftoff. We're start seeing, we're gonna start seeing a buildup of white clouds emanating from the Falcon 9. That's perfectly normal. This, that's that excess liquid oxygen uh, boiling when, it re, when it's exposed to the ambient temperature uh, of the air around the Falcon 9 fuselage. Ground gas closeouts. The first and second stage are beginning to pressurize for launch, and we're about 15 seconds away from that startup mode call out. Flight computer has entered startup. We have confirmation of start out. We're just waiting for launch directors go for launch call out. Turkset 5A, Falcon 9, LD is go for launch. And you've heard it, we're 30 seconds away. All systems are go for an on time launch of Falcon 9 with the Turkset 5A satellite, our first launch for this year. 30 seconds. seconds into flight on the Falcon 9. All engines are running at full power. We are preparing to enter through our first major milestone after liftoff, max Q. It's going to occur at T plus one minute, 12 seconds. We're gonna, about, we're gonna throttle those engines down. We've confirmed nominal status from the avionics team. Next, max Q, that's when the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of dynamic pressure. We throttle those engines down and afterwards we thought of them back up to keep dynamic pressures below a certain level. Is supersonic. Okay. 
max Q. We've successfully crossed the max Q threshold. Everything is looking good with the first stage of trajectory. Next, we're going to start our MVAC chill. This is going to help us prepare for the next three major events. They occur one after another. The first one, those nine Merlin 1D engines are going to cut off. That's known as MECO or main engine cutoff. Right after that, the first and second stage will separate. And then the Merlin vacuum MVAC engine, engine on the start. second stage will turn on. That's known as SES-1. about 15 seconds away from throttling down those Merlin 1D engines, you'll, you'll start to see that visual change and that plume you see on the screen. Main engine cutoff. State separation confirmed. All right, all good news here. We had successful main engine cutoff, stage separation, and second engine start one. Our next milestone is fairing deployment. Those two fairing halves on the top of the second stage are no longer needed, and we'll jettison them uh, to help expose the Turksat 5A satellite to space and attempt to recover those later on. Second stage is on a nominal trajectory. Bearing separation confirmed. And you saw there, we just jettisoned our two fairing halves. It's our first good view of Turksat 5A. It's now exposed to space, and those two fairing halves are heading back down to sea level. For those of you just joining, we're four minutes into flight on today's mission of carrying the Turksat 5A satellite to its intended High orbit on the Falcon 9. Bermuda. We're currently in the first of two planned MVAC burns. That's what you see on your screen currently. Uh, it's not pictured here currently, but that's uh, after stage separation. The first stage, we're attempting to recover it. Its velocity at separation was about 2,200 meters per second, or 5,000 miles per hour. Once the separation occurs, the first stage is still moving at such a high velocity, it continues to raise its altitude as it approaches its apogee, and then it will coast down a couple minutes before it starts its return back to Earth. Up next, what you'll hopefully see is the first stage's entry burn. This is the first major milestone for first stage recovery. For entry burn, we're gonna relight the center of those nine Merlin engines. It's actually engine number nine. Uh, and partway through this transition, we then ignite two more engines, engine one and engine five, which means we have three total M1D engines helping slow down the vehicle as it passes into the Earth's increasingly thickening atmosphere. That burn will last about 30 seconds, and we're just about a minute away from that. And also not pictured here, those two fairing halves are they're making way their way down. It'll take a lot longer than it will for the first stage, but we will attempt to recover those later on in the evening. Expected loss of signal, Cape. First stage is now uh, less than 100 kilometers above sea level, continuing to make its way down. Just 10 seconds away from entry burn. As you, as you watch this here, watch that exhaust expand as it goes from one engine to three engines. It'll sort of elongate. 
stage one entry burn startup. Entry burn has begun. All three engines are running currently. Stage one, entry burn shut down. You heard it, you saw it, entry burn has shut down. Next a couple milestones happening back to back. On the second stage on your screen, we're going to turn off that MBAC engine. It's known as SECO 1, or second engine cutoff 1. And right after that milestone, we're going to start our final first stage burn, the landing burn, hopefully culminating with a fourth landing of this particular first stage. Going back to SECO, we shut down the MBAC, and after that period, we actually allow the second stage to coast. This event preserves the fuel until we need it for that final burn, uh, second engine start number two, and it takes us to our targeted orbit for today's satellite deploy. We're about 30 seconds away from SECO-1, and after that, only about 30 more seconds until we hopefully have a nice view of the first stage touching down on our Just Read the Instructions autonomous drone ship. Stage two FTS is saved. Stage one landing burn, sorry. Our landing burn has started. Our second engine has also cut off, as you can see. We're just awaiting confirmation of good orbital insertion. And back on sea level, you can see here the drone ship. We have confirmation to go over orbit on the second stage, and... Looks like we have a good landing on, on the drone ship as well. This is SpaceX's 71st successful first stage recovery. This particular booster is fourth successful recovery, getting ready for its fifth flight in the future. That's our secondary mission, vehicle reusability, but our primary mission is not yet complete. The second stage vehicle has now entered its first coast phase and will last about 18 minutes. After that, we're going to light that MBAC engine for a second time shortly after at about T plus 26 minutes, 51 seconds. For those of you interested in keeping an eye on where that second stage is throughout the coast phase, you can follow along with our animation for the next 18 minutes. Otherwise, we'll see you back here at T plus 25 minutes.